preferences are a great way to customize the way Silhouette Studio behaves. You'll find the preferences icon down in the lower right corner. It looks like a gear. Your preferences panel includes various tabs and I'll show you what the most helpful settings do. As you adjust the various settings, you'll find favorites that work for your own workflow and designing style. Some settings you may want to change temporarily based on the particular project you're working on. Let's start in the General tab. You can choose a language, default save location, unit of measurement, show dimensions or not, and print resolution. The default save location is your hard disk drive, but if you want, you can set it to save all designs to your library. You can still choose where to save each document with File, Save As, then choose Hard Disk or Library. Let's go back to the General tab in Preferences. The shortcut for opening Preferences is Control or Command K. Show Dimensions refers to the bounding box when an object is selected. If you uncheck the box, you'll see no dimensions for your selected object. I prefer to leave this box checked most of the time so I can see my dimensions. Print resolution is usually good enough at 300 dpi, or dots per inch, for the general user, but you can change it to the dpi that works best for your printer. Now let's move on to the Defaults tab. Page orientation can be set to always start at portrait mode when not using square page sizes, always start with landscape mode, or to choose automatically. You can always change the page orientation in your page setup panel. Default fill style is for new shapes or text you draw or type on your workspace. The default is to draw blank shapes with a red outline. You can opt for a solid fill where every new drawing or text fills with a blue fill and dark gray lines. Or you can change back to the default outline only and choose between a black or a red outline. Any object can have its fill color or line color changed after it's created. Always Display Mat is to display or hide the cutting mat permanently. Cut to Edge of Page is unchecked by default. That leaves a small border of material on each side of the page that will not cut, as you can see with this red cut border. If you want every available bit of cutting space on your document, check the box for Cut to Edge. If you do mostly print and cut projects, you may want to turn registration marks on with every new document. The default is off. You can turn registration marks on or off for each project in the third tab of the Page Setup panel or by pressing the shortcut key letter M. Center of Rotation is a Designer Edition feature. This shows a visible crosshair mark in the center of your selected object, which can then be adjusted. Sometimes it gets in the way, so you can turn it off or on here in Preferences, or use the shortcut key letter O to toggle it off or on. You can change the panel mode here in Preferences to control how existing panels behave as you open additional panels. See our video on Panels in Silhouette Studio to find out more about this feature. Silhouette Device Connections is if you have more than one Silhouette machine. You can choose if the software auto-releases or keeps the connections. I usually check the first option. On to the Display tab. I leave anti-aliasing alone, but this affects how smooth objects are on curved lines and diagonals. The higher the sample, the smoother the image is. You can change your theme colors here. Watch what happens to the menu, panel, and sidebar colors as I choose between different themes. You can also cycle through the themes with this rotating arrow icon next to your Preferences icon in the lower right corner. Even if you pick a theme, you can still change just the workspace background color to suit your needs. Button size affects the size of icons. This makes the buttons nice and big, but if your screen is small, you may not be able to fit them all on it. Look for arrow pop-outs to reveal any hidden buttons that don't fit on your screen. Or you can choose smaller buttons to fit everything on your screen at once. Animation affects the speed at which changes happen on your screen. 
For example, if I want to fill the page with this shape and my animation is slow, you'll see it fill the page. If we bump up the animation speed all the way to the fast side, watch how quickly the fill page function works this time. You can place the slider anywhere along that line based on your viewing preference. Curve quality is for pixelation of curved lines and only affects the display, not cut quality. I leave this one alone. Import is the next tab in Preferences. All of the import options allow you to decide how you want your imported GSD, SVG, or DXF files to appear on the screen. You can choose where they open, whether or not to convert white lines to black, and if you want to join lines into polylines. This depends on what other file types you work with, and you can adjust the settings to find what works best for you. SVG is an option if you have Designer Edition or higher. Let's move on to the Tools tab. Many of these I'll change based on my current project, so these are some really handy options you should know about. It's all personal choice here, so feel free to experiment with all of the choices in this section of Preferences. All of these Actions After Tool Use let you opt between going back to your selection tool after using the tool or keeping that tool selected. The Select tool is the normal arrow that appears and lets you click on individual objects or drag to select multiple objects. I may want to draw a lot of shapes or do a lot of erasing at once, so choosing to continue using the tool can be really helpful. But if it drives you crazy that your tool doesn't release when you're finished with it, you might want to opt for Choose Select after tool use. You may also want to know that if you have these set to continue using the tool, you can always get back to your Select tool quickly by choosing the hotkey letter V. You can also choose preferences for your selection tools. Drag selecting is when you select objects by holding down your mouse and draw a selection box around the shapes you want. You can either select anything that touches that drag box, or choose to only select those objects that are completely enclosed by your drag box. Let's look at this set of flowers to demonstrate. Right now I've got my preferences set to select anything that touches the drag box. If I drag a selection box with these four flowers in the middle, my box will select anything that touches it. I'll turn them pink. Now undo, and I'll go to Tools in Preferences again, and change it to Select Shapes Enclosed by Drag Box. If I drag a similar box, only the objects completely enclosed by that selection box will become selected. Now I can select those centers and turn just those pink. You might miss something important if you choose the Enclose option, but you might pick up too much if you choose the Touch option, so this is one you might change frequently depending on your specific design and what you're doing. When many shapes are selected, choosing a single bounding box means you see the rotation point, drag handles, and dimensions for the group as a whole. Choosing multiple bounding boxes brings those up for every object selected. And while that may not be helpful for this flower design, it could be useful when quickly comparing sizes of a group of objects like these arrows. You can also choose what's selected when right-clicking. You can choose to select whatever you right-click on, or you can choose to keep the original shape selected no matter where you right-click on the screen. The right-click pop-up menu will apply to the selected object, so that's why this is important. This last section has options for editing tools. Show Bezier Control Handles relates to how you view points on a curve in Point Edit Mode. For selected points only, which is the default, shows the Bezier toggle lines when you have an individual point selected. If you select all points, you can see all the toggle lines at the same time. The last two choices deal with how the Knife, Eraser, Subtract, and Subtract All tools treat thick lines. You probably won't need to change these, but you can. The default converts thick lines to polygons for subtract and subtract all, 
which can be important since lines behave differently than shapes with the subtract feature. The default for knife and eraser is to maintain thick lines as lines. The next tab in Preferences is Updates. You can choose to have the software check automatically for you daily, weekly, or never. If you choose never, then just be sure to check for updates manually on SilhouetteAmerica.com. Once an update is downloaded, it still needs to be installed on your computer. You can find out more about updating your software on our video, Silhouette Software Update Process. The last tab is the Advanced tab. You probably won't do much here unless directed by Silhouette Support. Reset Library removes everything in your library and resets it back to the original installation settings. Restore Preloaded Designs can retrieve designs that came with your machine if they've disappeared. Set Library Permissions can be used if there's a problem with your library and it appears blank even though you've purchased or created designs. Restore Factory Defaults resets all the default settings. Open GL Settings allows you to adjust selected display issues. HTTP sockets may be adjusted to a higher number to increase download speed when purchasing images from the Silhouette Design Store. This depends on your internet connection speed. Packet size is related to the amount of information being sent to your Silhouette machine. The default is 1000. If you're experiencing a lot of lagging and delays when sending intricate cut jobs to your machine, lowering the packet size can prevent your machine from being overwhelmed. Proxy settings is for proxy connection setups. Use IME allows you to type non-Western characters. The default is checked. Include cut data needs to be checked if cutting from a USB drive as it includes cut settings in the saved file. Software overcut is checked by default. With this option, beginning and ending cut points minutely overlap each other, ensuring they connect to produce a clean cut. That's it for preferences. As you experiment with these, you'll find favorite settings that make sense to you. I hope you found this helpful. Thanks for watching.